like when I compare it to all the other medicines, San Pedro, I would say is the most gentle, the most relaxed, the most integratable into um, daily life. It's more of a presence medicine, bringing us into our body, out of our heads. Um, another name for it is Wachuma, which uh, means headless. It's a Quechua word for headless or dizzy. I don't find it very dizzy. I find that it brings me out of my head and gets me in touch with um, my more primal parts of myself and enables me to feel and see what is real. It's a truth serum. In the San Pedro group, there's like 10 different sub varieties and there's actually way, way more than that. But um, all of them have different energetics and the way I like to describe them is some are very much more masculine or visionary and some are more feminine or earth-like. Yeah, but my experience of the San Pedro is it's like grandmother and grandfather. It's very androgynous, extremely balanced, and it holds us comfortably like we are. That, that baby being cuddled by grandma and grandpa held together. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Psychedelic Conversations. Today, I have Nathan Tinder in the house. Thank you very much for making this time to be with us and welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be sitting here with you across the big water ocean. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and it's a pleasure for us. Uh, you're tuning in from Oregon and um, probably my first actually guest from Oregon, I must say. Okay. Maybe, I'm not sure, but probably. So I'm really interested in uh, diving deeper into the legal system and how the plant sacraments are available in Oregon, in what context at the moment. But before we dive in, I'd like to say a few words about your background and what you do for our listeners to connect. Great. Uh, so Nathan is a San Pedro influencer, master fire and ancestral arts educator, body worker, healing facilitator and ceremonial guide, rewilding educator, regenerative cactus farmer. So this is exciting. And before we dive in, if you don't mind maybe sharing your personal story, what brings you here? Yeah, my personal story, what brings me to this conversation about psychedelics and sacraments. Um, yeah, I've uh, um, been personally using psychedelics for most of my adult life and have uh, found them to be uh, an amazing tool for self-discovery, for learning more how to clearly uh, um, make my way and navigate this universe. Uh, and I, uh, I found through those the use of those sacraments that um, I've received visions on how to better myself and how to uh, better my relationship with the, the world, my community, my greater community, the earth and the plants. And so, um, yeah. Uh, I also have studied wilderness living skills, how to live with the earth, how to be present, how to play with the earth. And I found that these sacraments um, are very useful in um, communicating with um, the plant world, communicating with the earth and uh, communicating with each other. And have uh, I work with the sacred fire. I tend fire and uh, create sacred spaces that are a safe space for us to explore our relationships and um, our intentions of how to uh, better ourselves. And so I um, have found that um, there's many tools to that we can use in the sacred fire and uh, um, different plant medicines, tobacco, 
sage, sweet grass, um, San Pedro, cannabis, and uh, um, psychedelic or psil psilocybin mushrooms um, are all kind of cornerstones of some of the uh, skills and sacraments that we have used. And uh, I have been uh, facilitating these ceremonies at um, gatherings, festivals, weddings, and for community um, integration circles, um, men's circles, men and women's circles. Um, and I have been doing that for about 27 years now. Um, and specifically working with the older ways of the firewall, I call them timeless technologies, ancient skills that will help us in our future. Um, these are also future skills because these are the same skills that are regenerative that will be that will last forever. And so we call them timeless technologies. And um, and really a, a big part of that is using a uh, hand drill and bow drill to start our fires and using the metaphor of creation story through creating the fire in these ancient but future ways. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a, um, a synopsis of my journey. And uh, yeah, it's been an exciting journey and it's getting more exciting every day for sure. Mm, that's so wonderful. Thank you for sharing it. So I believe in Oregon, there is a more relaxed legal system around sacraments now. And um, uh, if you could give us an overview, how did that come about? If our listeners have no idea, because some of these um, plant sacraments are quite, you know, strictly um, legal, illegal, and there's a whole legal system to be navigating at the moment anyway, some of our friends in the psychedelic space. So um how does it feel to be in Oregon and and how is it how how long has it now been sort of um legal in the way that you could use it for I believe in a ceremonial or ritual or maybe a spiritual um context I believe yeah um specifically with uh cactus medicine peyote and San Pedro I believe it was passed like six or seven or eight years ago I'm not exactly sure, um, but there was a legal case having to do with peyote. And yeah, uh, the, the result of that case was they made it legal for people to use um, the um, peyote and San Pedro. They contain a mescaline, mescaline alkaloid in them. And um, they made that legal for people to use for ceremonial or religious intention. And that and that is really um, nice to you know know that you know if you're using appropriate technologies and intentions that it's safe for us to practice our personal religion. And then um, I believe a few years ago they made it legal for all medicines um, to be available for personal use, just for personal use. Um, and so that, you know, has been interesting. They, I guess that would be more of a uh, decriminalized um, the personal use of all uh, medicines or drugs, so to speak. And then um, the last year or two, they made uh, psilocybin legal for therapeutic use. So um, there are um, all kinds of trainings for um, psilocybin therapists, and uh, they're creating channels for uh, the legal growing of mushrooms for um, therapeutic use. And I do believe there's ketamine cl clinics around now, um, and that has been legal and has been practiced for a while as well. So it is really creating, yeah, a culture of safety and also um, yeah, like safe practices. How can we use the sacraments in a safe way? How can we, um, yeah, make it safe for everyone to the best of our ability? And um, that's really exciting. Uh, the practices are happening and the knowledge base is growing really fast. Wow, I just cannot comprehend how would that <laughs> look like? 
being over here and we're still very much in the midst of, you know, hardly be able to talk about them. Uh, it's very restrictive. And uh, yeah, in the UK, we're still kind of reserved and very difficult to have these conversations. So I just cannot comprehend. So very lucky to be there for you, I guess, and your community. Um, so, and obviously we need to talk about the the right way of communing with these sacraments, I believe. It's not about just let's make it all legal and that everybody can, you know, immerse themselves in it. And we know now that it's not the right way. So as an educator, what are the things that you would like to share with us? And, and of course, um, the way that you bring it to your community in your context of ceremony, um, sacred ceremony, what is a ceremony and what is sacred? If you could sort of share your views on that. So, yeah, that, um, those are really great questions, questions I've been exploring deeply. And, uh, you know, um, these uh, sacraments work best in containers. So this is a practice of letting our psyche, letting our body, letting our brain know that we're going to sit down and explore um, ourselves in a container. So uh, a ceremony would be a container that has a specific beginning and a specific ending. And um, ceremony is a ceremony, sharing energy together with purpose and intention. And uh, when we start practicing um, creating these containers, um, we get better at um, um, being in the container. Our body knows what to do. The plant um, spirits know what to do. And then, um, you know, specifically with a psychedelic facilitator um, holding the space, it's somebody who is holding the flow of the container, the direction the energy is moving, but most importantly, the center. Um, if our center is held, we know we are going to be safe. Someone's looking after us, us if we're having a hard time. Someone's keeping the outer container safe, while, you know, making sure that dogs are, whatever that is, you know, making sure that we are in a safe space, then our bodies, our minds, our psyche are going to be able to relax and be more effective at exploring our intentions. Um, so, you know, when I look at ceremonies, I look at them um, I'm very fractally, what am I creating the ceremony for? Am I creating a space for myself? Am I holding our center? Am I in a relationship ceremony? Am I going to explore our relationship together? Am I in a community ceremony, giving space for the individual to explore space and us sharing um, our energy together? Or am I in a festival container doing this for 5,000 people with a giant team? Um, so we can move these ceremonies up and down. They can be four days. They can be one hour. Um, but the concepts are um, similar. Um, um, how are we going to create a safe space? What energies are we inviting into this space? And what energies are we saying need to stay out of this space? And um, what happens when we use different sacraments, they bring different qualities to these experience, these experiences. Um, some sacraments are really good for doing um, kind of self-exploration in our own container, diving into um, our past, present, and future. And then some sacraments are really great at bringing the group container together so that they can explore ideas and be able to really feel each other's prayers, each other's intentions, um, and emp having um, empathy and sympathy and compassion in a way that we wouldn't normally have without these sacraments. Um, the, the cactus, uh, medicine, peyote, and San Pedro especially are very good at bringing coherence into spaces. Um, so they're my favorite energies for like group containers. 
Um, and they're also really great energies for self-exploration as well. Um, whereas uh, um, the psilocybin in a group situation will kind of send everyone on their own journey and they're going to have a hard time um, being in each other's shoes because they're so full on in their own experience, so to speak. Um, and then uh, we've, you know, there's so many other ways besides using plant medicines to create ceremonial containers and there, um, a fire being one of those sacraments that um, we have been using forever. Um, everyone knows fire. We've all sat around a fire. And what happens um, with a fire is with, within a few minutes of staring at a fire, it brings our brain waves from a beta state of consciousness into alpha state of consciousness. So sitting around the fire automatically brings us into a trance state and enables us to communicate more clearly together. And it's a familiarity if we bring um, elements into ceremony that we're familiar with, we bring um, the air element, we bring the fire element, we bring the water element, we bring the earth element, then that is a very um, familiar place for our spirit. And then our spirit can relax and we can become more into a meditative, clear transmission of a state for exploring energy together. This is so fascinating and it's so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. I almost want to ask you this question of like, how does it, how does the trauma work then happens through these containers in the more like a ceremonial or ritual context? Um, because uh, you probably already know now that the whole psychedelic world is going crazy over trauma healing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very, it, it's becoming a very individualistic um you know, I, you know, these are my needs and this is what I need to go and seek. And then there is this uh, very arduous seeking of like healing on mm -hmm. an individual level. Um, but from what I'm hearing, as you speak about the ceremony space and the container and the sacredness of it all, it's, it's kind of giving me feelings of like more of a community container together, sort of like we go together and we bring more coherence to the people that we are together not so much like individual like my life my healing journey but more like a, a community feel to it so what are your thoughts on the psychedelics or psychedelic or plant um, sacraments being used for medical or just sort of clinical settings where they just heal trauma or or mental health issues or some depression or some physical ailments? Like, what are your thoughts on that? What are my thoughts on using it, using it in a clinical situation versus a ceremonial situation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from my experience, there's like a time and a place for everything. Um, one of the things I've learned about these sacraments, it's all good medicine. So, you know, I really feel the, that's a great way to do exploration. Um, as well. Um, but they're, yeah, in a group context, um, especially, you know, I work with uh, San Pedro Sacramento the most, I grow it, and uh, um, it's a uh, grief medicine. So it really enables us to get in touch with what is. Um, what are we really feeling can be um, disguised by so much like chaos and all the different vibrations and energies and people, things that people have told us and um, literally thousands of ways we've gathered trauma and not felt it. And it's been stored into our tissue, into our psyche and into our body. Um, the beauty of not being alone in this process is not being alone. It's like, okay, we are all um, here on this earth together in this, we're literally on the same container, same ceremony, and um, we're all more the same than we are different. And so the beauty of uh, the circle, I call these quantum technologies, timeless technologies, circle technology. So 
um, when we are praying and um, we're going through our process and the ceremony, what we do is we create, we do different rounds and we create space for grief. We create space for movement of energy, for positivity, for well, all, like a, a, a San Pedro ceremony is a 12 hour ceremony. So there is time and space for everything. But what happens in a group process as we're trying to feel what our trauma is, what is our prayer, what are we really feeling, um, the person sitting across from us will say their prayer, but it's the prayer that we were seeking. And when they are going through their process and emoting um, their grief, we are in their process and emoting our grief in a way that we never could have done alone. And just knowing that someone else is in that process, has felt those things, have um, been in that is a validation and enables us to even go deeper into our process that we could not have done um, alone. And so, yeah, what it feels like when you're sitting with 12 others, you went through 12 um, journeys because your empathy is so open, your heart is so open that you can feel, I can feel what others are feeling. As a facilitator, I am feeling all, like my whole goal is to listen to listen with every part of my being and just to be heard is healing. Yeah. Just to be heard and validated in our experience. You know, we don't even have to like get to the end of the rainbow and have our full healing. You know, everyone talks about healing. What is it? Well, healing is a process. The more we heal, the more we heal. Um, it's like layers of an onion. And it's like, um, I, I think there's this idea that, you know, we can go in and take a pill and heal or take a plant medicine and we'll receive our healing and we'll be done and we'll be enlightened, you know. And I think that that's not a um, a true reality. The, um, this is a process. So the the like I said, I think that that both are important. Um, I think that. Uh, going and closing our eyes and doing a deep journey in a bed by ourselves is 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 an important way to heal and i think that group ceremonies or sharing energy is also an amazing way to heal and um, both technologies are valid and both are important i think um when we get really clinical and we're just like you go, go in here, you eat the medicine, close your eyes and listen to a journey. And there's not um, um, those those feelings that are um, familiar to us. You know, the earth, the container, what is sacred? That question, what is sacred? Sacred gets thrown a lot around in our world right now. Um, I don't know what sacred is, but I ask that question. And I am curious. Um, and so... If uh, um, there is an attempt for um, bringing these elements of familiarity into the space, creating a container with prayer, I think that that just helps our psyche feel better and gets us, you know, it's like uh, my favorite set and setting is gratitude. Um, if we have gratitude, then that's going to put us in an appropriate space for um, healing in the best way we can. And so just, yeah, bringing that into the clinical setting would be enough to change the entire vibe for sure, or vibration. That's so wonderful. Thank you so much for speaking to that. So um, I have some questions about San Pedro Sacrament. Um, okay. So for our listeners that are not familiar with the different types of the psychedelic sacraments, for example, peyote and San Pedro, there are, is there just the two types or this is the mescaline compound? I think you mentioned earlier. Um, what would you say on the educational front of, of, of this sacrament? So, yeah, you know, um, in simplicity, um, um, peyote and San Pedro um, are the most um, most used plants for the mescaline in them. Mescaline is a molecule um, that uh, lasts 12 hours in the body. And uh, 
So these are long journeys. And um, peyote, it grows in the deserts and has a long history of use by Native Americans and people from Mexico and has a lot of long-standing traditions that are still happening and still in use. Um, it's very, it has a whole bunch of alkaloids in it as well. Um, more, I think it's got like 27 alkaloids in it when uh, Wachima's got like 15 or something. I'm not um, good at the exact numbers of these things. Um, and so, yeah, it, it holds uh, a certain vibration. It's very strong, even more um, hallucinogenic or um, more visual than San Pedro. And then San Pedro grows in the mountains. So it's a mountain cactus. Um, it grows really fast compared to um, peyote. And um, the energy of it, it still contains mescaline, um, but there's a lot of less other alkaloids going on to it. And um, I would say it's way more gentle, way more gentle on um, the stomach, the body, and um, way more gentle it. Um, like when I compare it to all the other medicines, San Pedro, I would say, is the most gentle, the most relaxed, the most integratable into um, daily life. It's less uh, until you get into really high dose realms. It's more of a presence medicine, bringing us into our body, out of our heads. Um, another name for it is Wachuma, which uh, means headless. It's a Quechua word for headless or dizzy. I don't find it very dizzy. I find that it brings me out of my head and gets me in touch with um, my more primal parts of myself and enables me to feel and see what is real. It's a truth serum. And so, yeah, and then um, in the San Pedro group, there's like 10 different sub varieties and there's actually way, way more than that. But um, all of them have different energetics and the way I like to describe them is some are very much more masculine or visionary and some are more um, feminine or earth-like, uh, much more relaxed and have a more feminine vibration to them. And so what I found is like the, the, the San Pedro's that grow more spiky with long thorns are more masculine and the ones that grow with less thorns and are softer are more feminine. And then, um, yeah, I think I touched on it. It's a truth serum. Mm -hmm. So um, ayahuasca, they describe as a slippery snake. It kind of moves us in and out of future, past and present through lots of visionary tricks. And it's more like a dream, very metaphorical. Um, and then uh, San Pedro, um, is they call the straight arrow. It's just like ching, and uh, it's not gonna. I call it choose your own adventure because wherever we put our intention or our energy is where the plant energy flows. So, if we want to explore um, a more um, visionary state, then we would do breath work, move the energy, move the energy up into our crown, and we can experience a more visionary experience. Um, if we want a more grounded experience, then we're going to do slow breathing into the ground and uh, feel ourselves here and um, embody presence um, or um, bring more water into the, the ceremony. So, um, and then, uh, yeah, loves breath work, loves dance, loves movement, um, loves play loves being outside in the day. Um, it's uh, traditionally more of a daytime ceremony. Before the conquistadors um, came into South America and drove a lot of their religious practices under the ground, this was a daytime ceremony integrated into uh, more of a daily life experience. And um, the ayahuascas were more of like a nighttime experience tuning into the darker realms. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, and then oftentimes people describe it as more masculine, like grandfather. Um, and peyote is described as grandfather medicine as well, whereas um, uh, cannabis is more of a feminine energy. 
and ayahuasca is described as grandmother. Uh, and, but my experience of the San Pedro is it's like grandmother and grandfather. It's very androgynous, extremely balanced, and it holds us comfortably like we are. Um, that that baby being cuddled by grandma and grandpa held together um, is the energy I get from it. And uh I'm yeah, so glad. Um, yeah, I'm so glad you said that because a lot of people kind of like to distinguish them as feminine or father or grandmother or um I didn't have that experience with San Pedro. So mm. I had um my personal experience, I think I had two ceremonies with in a in a ceremonial setting, in a group setting, um, with San Pedro. And for me, it wasn't either feminine or you know masculine it was just a very different experience of as you said it was a day ceremony so it was outside it was sun shining and so I have a history of uh, recovering from OCD Mm. Um, and on my first ceremony it was almost like this energy was just held my hand and took me outside and I was walking around in nature and um, before that experience, uh, I was very sort of like, I wouldn't walk on grass, or I wouldn't want to touch anything or insects would really mm. annoy me. And I was really sort of uh, almost desensitized from nature. And that ceremony, the first time I uh, had the San Pedro experience, it's almost like somebody took me by hand and said, look, this is insects and they're all friends <laughs> and look at the trees, look at the grass, they're all friends, you don't have to be worried yeah. about these things. And um, that was it. My OCD was gone. I didn't. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, it wasn't like a like I said, feminine or anything like that. It was just like somebody was taking me to show me and educate me. This is nature. This is, mm-hmm. this is a mm-hmm. friend. You know, it was just so most beautiful thing ever. Yeah. So I I know exactly what you mean about the sort of presencing and being there for it. And um, that was my experience anyway. So I really love the medicine in that sense that's lovely yeah. that sounds amazing yeah and then finally I was able to lie on the grass and then really kind of look really deep down into the earth and then also like feeling that there are creepy crawlies under here and insects and they're all friends and it's okay <laughs> we're all one it was just the most mind-blowing insights that are you know <laughs> we know these things but I never felt it in my bones until that time. Right. And I, after that, I was able to abandon some of those OCD traits that I carried. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, That's amazing. That, yeah, that's my experience. Like a lot of people will say they heal different things, but for me, that was a huge deal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it takes us where we need to go and what mm-hmm. we're working on personally. And uh, I think that's one of the things I like the most about it is it's a, uh, disillusionary yeah uh, very much like let's be here like yes this is enough (laughs) this is enough we don't have to travel to other realms so to speak this realm is where we want to be we chose this we made all the right decisions and we're here because this is where we want to be and um, it's really helped me discover that childlike wonder like you were describing i'm like oh my Mm -hmm. gosh this is it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's probably that's that what's the, the experience that I had as well. Like, you know, um, some people say it can be psychedelic, may well be, um, but it, it both times it wasn't my experience at all. Mm-hmm. It was more like just like you said, let's connect to what we can see and touch and what is tangible right mm-hmm. here now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, so that's wonderful. So one one question comes to my mind. Um, so every um, facilitator or you know psychedelic facilitator I speak with on this podcast, um, of course, they work with different medicines. And I always wonder, um, what was the connection with San Pedro for you? Like each person seems to kind of work with either psilocybin. I, I talk to five MEO facilitators and ayahuasca facilitators. And, and I always wonder, what was the connection? And of course, like thinking about my own uh, indigenous uh, facilitator that I worked with in the past, she always says, medicine will choose you. So that's kind of the concept that she was always talking about. But I wonder what are your thoughts on that? 
So yeah, like I, I can uh, I reflect on that. My kids helping me in the garden. Like, why did why did you choose San Pedro? It's got spines, and this is hard. Um, but yeah, like I, I never really imagined myself being fascinated with a cactus. I never saw that coming. Um, I am fascinated with utilitarian skills. I, uh, like I said, I, I practice wilderness living skills. I want to be in survival. I want to find tools that are free and available to me to um, help shape my reality easier, more comfortably. And um, I always love psychedelics. Um, and I grew cannabis for a long time medically. Um, and I found that I had a, a green thumb. And the thing is, like, learning a plant, like, growing a plant and um, having a relationship with it is so much different than just going out and buying something and consuming it. And uh, I found my relationship with cannabis brought me a deeper relationship with every other plant being and every other being in my life. I was able to take what looked like a green world and start to see the differences. And, um, you know, I liked um, eating psychedelics, acid, mushrooms, whatever I could find. I was experimenting back in my younger days. And um, somebody sat me down at a festival and fed me raw San Pedro. And it took a long time because like some strains of San Pedro, you have to eat quite a bit of to feel the psychedelic effect. And um, I was also very hard headed. I had to take lots of psychedelics to experience them. But uh, one, once he fed me enough of it, it was like coming home. It was like, oh, my gosh, this is the most relaxing, present, joyful medicine I've ever experienced. And then from a utilitarian perspective, this is a medicine we can grow at home. We can grow legally almost everywhere in the world. It um, propagates through cutting, um, also through seed but you can harvest the medicine, save the tip and grow a new plant, which to me is a phenomenal um, experience. And um, then, so like right after I ate it the first time and had this glorious experience with it and it brought a lot of things together for me, I started growing it. I ordered some seedlings off eBay and I started my personal relationship with this plant and found um, I loved staring at it. And this is a common phenomenon that happens with cactus growers as they end up staring at their cactus. And what I realized was I have this guru plant, this uh, master teacher plant that I can grow and I can sit with personally. And this plant has... I really feel like I've gathered more from it, from sitting with it than eating it. And uh, it's it's amazing. Like I uh, uh, um, now work with, uh, I call him Buddha Guru, but uh, I had a statue in the garden of Buddha and his head fell off and I planted a Wachuma in him. And he's kind of taken his own personality and uh he um, has become my teacher just because I invited him to be my teacher. I'm honoring him as a guru, and um, he teaches by listening and reflecting. And so um, to be able to have this plant in my life that I can grow easily, um, that grows fast, that I um, have been able to supply my family with ceremonial medicine for the last 14 years that we grew ourselves. We have full account of the medicine. We're in relationship with it. We're not taking it from somewhere else, um, from the jungles, having um, slave labor or people working for really cheap money, gathering it and sending it over um, the channels that it took to get here. These is we're self sustaining our uh, sacrament.
And so all those things put it together. I'm like, this is a, an amazing technology. This is a technology that I want to share with my tribe, share with my community, share with my country. Like this is something that makes sense um, in all ways for me. So, um, and then, you know, the other cool part about it is it doesn't, it's culture. I mean, it's not cool, but it's also awesome as um an American that doesn't have, um, I don't, I grew up Mormon. I kind of left my Mormon religion behind. So I don't have a culture that I come from or a lineage. And so that this lineage is open and accepting of people learning from it. And it's not like um, nobody's like kind of owning it, so to speak. And it's also um, really easy to learn from. Whereas ayahuasca is very tricky. You do want a lineage for working with that medicine because it's so powerful and can take us into so many realms. Um, this uh, medicine feels like it's a great one for people to study on their own and develop new lineages, new ideas, and new ceremonies. With So for me, being a wilderness living or survivalist, this is a tool that um, I've found applicable that I can gather, use easily, grow easily, and share easily um, with my community. So that's, yeah, that's why I fell in love with it. And then I also think it's a calling, like they said, like certain medicines call to us. And um, yeah, I'm a man of practicality. I like things that are practical and easy and easy to understand. And I find that San Pedro is very practical in those ways, for sure. That's so helpful. Thank you so much for sharing. And I love the concept of inviting in your teacher. That's the teacher that's just coming into your awareness in your field. I really love this um, approach. Uh, so there's a lot of respect. There is a lot of, you know, uh, you know, doing this with like connection through relationship rather than the consumerism mindset where I could just take it and, you know, from anywhere. Uh, do you also believe that where they grow, they are also the environment can imprint them energetically because they say that about the mushrooms. I'm guessing it's all the same with all medicines, all sacraments, right? Well, who's growing who? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, like, right? <laughs> I started this project through um, an ayahuasca vision that I had. Um, you know, uh, I was being asked to um, to provide ceremony. And I'm like, what is my lineage? What authority do I have to um, bring and share these technologies? And um, I had this vision of growing um, plant medicines from seed to ceremony and um, um, asking the plants to teach me one-on-one um, um, -on -one by loving them and connecting to them and learning about the plants from the ground up, from the seed up. And I started San Pedro and then I've been studying tobacco, sage, sweetgrass, tulsi, and corn. And then we sit in the garden um, and imbibe them and philosophize with the plants directly and with each other in ceremonial technologies around the sacred fire. <clears throat> and so, you know, tobacco um, carries the imprint on where it's grown for like a hundred years or something like that. You can grow Havana tobacco and it will still have the taste of the land in Havana. And so I do feel that um, when the plants are grown with intention from the seed up, that you're like, hey, we are going, we want to um, participate with, in relationship with you in ceremony, you being a sacrament. Um, when we use you as a sacrament, we're going to give back to you. We're going to plant the tip of your future progeny to keep this energy going, but we're also going to take the... Um, the ashes from the ceremony, from feeding it prayers, and we're going to feed you. Um, we're also going to invite you into the ceremony. We're going to respect you as you are. And so, yes, I do believe that the plants are affected by um, how they're grown and what our relationship is with them. But I feel more affected by them <laughs> than they probably feel by me. 
And like I said, who's who's growing? Who now? Like I really do feel like the relationship I have um, with growing them that they're growing me. And one of my visions is to create a like a private membership association so that the plants um, can have some authority and autonomy, and they feel like they can own the land they're growing on. So creating like a membership where we um, it's kind of like we pay $10 a month as a group or as a community to help these plants buy their own land and have their own sovereignty. Um, and, uh, you know, just saying we hear you and we respect you and we want you to um, um, be respected and invited into this land and that you can have ownership and say and consent and how um, we use you. So yes, I do believe that the, the the plants pick up the energy of the land and listen to our prayers and help us um, help us by um, what they've learned from us as well. I just love these insights. Thank you so much. They're very helpful. I uh, just want to share one last thing I think I heard. It's either a name of a podcast or some sort of a education platform. I don't know could be a business name um i heard this time ago and it kind of resonates with what you said about who's growing who and the title was um plants are cultivating us not the mm -hmm. other way around so i feel like psychedelics are cultivating us for sure um and that is such a beautiful way of thinking and and having that insight and the relationship thank you so much for everything you have shared with us this has been a real pleasure to learn more about the the sacredness and the ceremonial aspect of the medicines and the sacraments. Um, before we let you go, I know you shared a little bit about your vision, but what are the projects that you're working on currently? And also where can our listeners find you, uh, learn more? And we also have audience and listeners in the US, and I'm sure they'll appreciate if you share uh, where they can find you and connect with you. Great, great. Yeah, right now I'm working on a, um, a manual <clears throat> or a use guide for San Pedro, really trying to tune in, like, uh, what did the plants have to say to us? So really trying to come from that perspective of what would it be like if I was interviewing the plant specifically? Um, I'm also working on a, a book uh, about the sacred fire, a manual for manifestation. Um, talking, having, giving a fire, the fire its voice and uh, really getting into the skills and the technology of ceremony and um, a way of um, uh, creating, creating greater understanding of our universe. Um, I also do, um, I have a healing practice here in Ashland, Oregon, where I do transformational massage and my wife also does women's health and she tunes the energetic biofield. And so, yeah, just we really bring everything we've learned from ceremony, um, from wilderness living skills, from herbalism into our healing practice. And then we do um, ceremony and retreats. Um, so uh, um, our healing center is sacredlivingcenter.com. And then our um, ceremonies and retreats are under hummingbirdhearth.com. Hummingbird is a, um, a totem animal for San Pedro, that hummingbird vibration. And uh, yeah, we're doing a retreat in the Baja, Baja, uh, Mexico by Cabo this winter. That's the, the retreat of my dreams, the container of my dreams, um, where we'll be doing um, three Wachuma ceremonies spread out with lots of fun and play. And then um, how else can you find us? I'm Nathan Tinder on Facebook, Cactivation on Instagram. Oh, and then if you want plants, I have galactic-cactus.com where I send plants all over the United States. And I do believe I can uh, smell plants to the UK. And all of the plants were started from seed with intention and they're all gurus so yeah would love to have one so we they can grow us help us grow uh would love to have one actually 
Um, this is so beautiful. We'll add all of your links and your bio in the show notes um, so they can have it there. Our listeners can connect with you directly. Um, and also LinkedIn, where we met, and I'll share some of oh, your yeah, LinkedIn. profile as well. Um, thank you so much, Nathan. It's been a pleasure having you and learning from you and look forward to maybe reconnecting again in the future. We'd love and, to. Uh, yeah, have part two and follow your journey and your projects. I think it would be amazing to keep in touch. Thank you, Susan. It's been a pleasure to conversate with you and to be in a container. <laughs> yes, always a container. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. Um, please share your experience, your feedback. Drop it in the comments. Don't be shy. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye for now. Thank you so much for joining us. Psychedelic Conversations podcast is designed to educate, inform and expand awareness. For more information, please head over to psychedelicconversations.com. You can also share with your friends or leave a review so that we can reach more people. You can also join us in our private Facebook group to keep the conversation going. This show is for information purposes only and it is not intended to provide mental health or medical advice. Thanks for listening.